Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. So today I titled this message, Be Aware of Your Enemy, Be Aware of Your Enemy. Back when I was a child, there was a mysterious white van that would go around the neighborhood. There were sightings of this white van. Later on, we found that there were attempts to kidnap children. And in some cases, they were successful. Then there was talk about a red car. And they were saying things like, do not go up to any car, children. Do not believe anything about I'm here to pick up your I'm, I'm here to pick you up because your mother sent me things like that. OK, fast forward. We are grown individuals. And there is all sorts of things happening all over the world that are shady. And there are no individuals that are out there having these meetings with you, listener, about what you need to do to safeguard yourself. You either look for that information, you happen to come across it, or you are on one of those various neighborhood community sites and then there are those individuals there. But there's no one sitting down saying that today is the day that you need to look out for the white van or for the red car. Stay with me because God is on the move. There are those individuals who pray and say, Lord, I hope that you can or I wish that you or please, Lord, let me know what is going on before I get there. And in many cases, God doesn't do that. Sometimes the Lord won't speak to us about where you're supposed to go or where you're not supposed to go. Okay. Sometimes you do get some information specific to you, your situation, where you live. But there are times where, no, you are flying blind. You are driving blind. You are Lord Jesus. You're on the train, the trolley, the bus. You're going to the concert, going to the special events. And you don't know what's right, right, what's right around the corner. Just because something happened on a plane doesn't mean that it won't happen on a train. You see, just because something happened on a bus doesn't mean that it's not going to happen on a trolley. You see, just because it didn't happen over there at this celebrity's concert and that one doesn't mean that it's not going to happen at a special event where it's a sporting event or a church gathering or even a corporate building. Now, why do I say this? Because some individuals, if you've been feeling something in your spirit about traveling in a particular or to a particular location via transportation, how about you believe your instinct? Just believe it. There were people on the day of 9-11 who did not show up to work. They trusted their instinct. Other people just knew people who knew people and we'll leave it at that. And they did not show up that day for work. A while back on one of my social media platforms, I told them, the audience, I told them, I said, pray before you leave. Pray before you walk out your door. Pray for your family members and friends. May God have mercy upon them. As they're riding, as they're walking, as they're traveling, you see, as they're passengers in vehicles. I've prayed this prayer many times for my own family members. And some of you all, if you haven't thought about praying lately, I suggest you do. Because every time there's a holiday season, that means what? More people out there on the road. During Thanksgiving... 18 people that I came across via news media died. Okay. 18. The number's probably more than that since then. What if there was instinct 
paranormal activity, something that was beckoning a person to not go. No, you don't need to go to grandma's. You don't need to go see your sister. You don't need to go see your friend. Stay home. How many people have those type of experiences where something told you and you listened and then you found out later that that one who did end up going in that direction to go see a family member, a friend ended up being in a terrible accident or worse passed away. You see, I've had situations where I've warned other people don't go and they want to give me lip, give me attitude. Okay. You can do that. And then you find out that when you got there, see everything, everything was fine. Nothing happened. Next thing you know, they didn't got into some kind of altercation with someone. Doesn't have to be that you have an accident. The point is, is that the command was not to go. Now you are in a situation where you can't speak to, don't want to speak to certain family members or friends because they didn't side with you uh, on an argument that you had with your no good, sorry, whoever, whatever, at the family event, when all you had to do was go. How many, once again, people feel in their spirit that you are not to go somewhere during the holidays, not even to your job. Mm, but they're going to need me and all that. Yeah. How many people were needed when stuff went on? You see, you've got to be in touch with the one true God. You really do. You really do. You have to take that time out because so many individuals that call themselves their own God, they're getting blindsided. The enemy is slaughtering them left and right. They have no reverence, no fear of the one true God. They're being slaughtered, you know? It's, it's like sheep, cow, uh, pigs, you know, when a farmer goes out and just slaughters animals for meat. Yeah, that's what's happening right now. The demonic is doing that with these I am my own God type of individuals or those who serve false gods. They're being blindsided. And even when you are the child of light. The one who you have that dream, that vision, that sign, that wonder that resonates with that family member or friend or co-worker or even a stranger on the street. And you tell them, you let them go. Whether they choose to go or not, that's on them. You let them go. Because at the end of the day, you did your job. Hallelujah. Praise be to the one true God. There is no blood on your hands. There is no guilt trip. If they want to talk about how they don't believe in and don't subscribe to, that's on you. Because see, long before we got here, <laughs> come on now, long before we got here, a series of events took place to create this world, Lord Jesus. And our little minds can't wrap our head around that. So if we can't wrap our head around that, then who are we to sit up there and talk about that? There is no entity that is warning me or telling me about anything. And who are we? That force, that being, that entity, God, I am, Holy Spirit, what have you, that is telling you, that's moving on you, the intuition, the gut feeling, whatever you want to call it, it's trying to keep you. It's trying to keep you from all harm and danger because you put out in the atmosphere that you wanted to be protected. You put out in the atmosphere that you want to be safe. So why are you not listening to your gut feeling? Why do you want to fly blind again? Because I'm telling you some individuals, the more we have people that are getting angrier and angrier about our country and the people within our country, the closer and closer they're going to get to the supermarket where you typically shop or someone else shops. And then you're going to be wondering, well, what is this? And how did this happen? Or the garage where you park your car, you see. And so are we supposed to run around and be fearful of these sorts of things? No, we're going to carry on. But we're going to carry on with Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to carry on with the Holy Spirit. You see, we're going to activate our faith. See, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're spiritual. 
And so when people put all sorts of demonic entities out in the atmosphere, you think that they're not going to land somewhere just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it. Come on. Doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And so you got those who, well, I'm just going to call on my whatever they call on to wage war on those that have put this stuff out here. And then there's this boomerang effect. And now all this negativity is coming their way because you can't, you can't keep some things in the box in the square in the pentagram, in the circle. I see some things right now in the spiritual realm. They got away. They got away from some people. They thought that they were going to put their fire around and put their precious little stones and whatever else around these things. These things are running around wild like a bee that's angry. And you know, after a while, if a bee feels threatened, what does it do? It's going to swing back around and sting you. You swinging and you acting crazy, you fighting with that bee, it's coming after you. And in the demonic realm, when you sitting up here and you're doing things or you know someone who's doing some things, the demonic doesn't want to be awakened no more than the deceased. That's supposed to be resting in peace. And so here we go, swirl, 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 all in the atmosphere, touching on people, embodying people messing with people messing with animals and these people are doing some wild things and saying some wild things and there are those issues that they have in their minds that they feel like they got to do something do something and their do something is destructive their do something is taken from others their do something is ultimately causing some people to either unalive themselves or for situations to take people off the face of this earth prematurely. Is some of you all ready for that? Of course you're not ready for that. And so that's why you need God like never before. You pray, you tell him what you want. It's not complicated. You tell him what you want, Lord, I need you to help me out with this situation right now. I need you, Lord, to protect me from all harm and danger. I need you, oh Lord, to put your blood covering upon me. Lord, bless my family with travel and mercy in Jesus' mighty name. And some, they will be saved. Others, they will not be saved. That's the reality. I don't fight with God about that. There have been people in my family that we prayed for. And then, unfortunately, they got themselves mixed up in situations and they ended up leaving off the face of this earth prematurely. Did I get mad at God about that? No. Nope. God knew. <laughs> what are we going to get mad at God for? He knew. He knew what was going to take place. It was their time. That's why you hear some people say, it was her time. It was her time to go. It was her time. Some of you all, you know that you don't want to hear the truth. Instead, you just want to continue to walk this earth pretending like we don't have any enemies and that America is still very, very strong. Yes, America is still very, very strong. But once again, just like you can recognize an enemy, a hater in your personal life, America has haters, has enemies. And that's all the more reason why you're going to make sure that you're paying attention to the strange vehicle that's going up and down the road that you keep seeing that strange vehicle and it's parked in a place that it shouldn't typically be parked at. And let's go and talk to the authorities about this because this is rubbing me the wrong way. And wait a minute, what are these people doing coming around the neighborhood like this? And it's late at night or it's early in the morning. And what is the strange things that they're doing? There's no work that needs to be done on those buildings or those houses. And let me see, why is this mysterious bag or this thing thrown here or there? It shouldn't be. And why is that man suddenly running or taking off or jumping? You know, wait a minute, something is weird. Or why is this person not able to give me straight answers? And why is this woman so nervous and she's got all this sweat coming down her face? And let me pay, let me pay closer attention. What is this that this person is carrying? Because this seems odd. And isn't this an odd hour? You see, you ask these questions. Things are peculiar. They're strange. They're odd. You see? I've never seen that before. What is that? And it's sitting right there in the aisle. Hmm. 
you see? Or an increase of threats in an area. The kids keep talking about there's somebody who's threatening this and threatening that, and I don't know, and they keep bringing this to the school and that to school. That's a day that you might just want your child to stay home. Matter of fact, the whole week, you're going to be, work, uh, as they say, uh, working from home, well, you're going to be attending your classes from home until they can get this under control and, and tell us that everything is good, safe, secure, all of that good stuff. You're not going nowhere. You see? We ask in Jesus' mighty name to protect our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our strangers on the street. We ask that those who are in law enforcement, those who are working at the fire department, the paramedics, all of them, that God keep them, protect them as well. And may they continue to have compassion in their heart to help others, you see doctors so much going on in this world that's not right that's disturbing that's evil that's ugly and sometimes there are those that know about things before they happen because there are designers manufacture manufactured events scripts and there are those things that know there was no way that that man or that woman or that group would have ever known that that was going to happen. They got blindsided, you see. But then there are those things where you knew for years or you knew for days or for months or for weeks that there was these issues that suddenly arose, right? And so then what do we do? We make sure that we're talking. Many people will take to their uh, various social media platforms to let us know what's happening in a neighborhood, in a city, in a town, in a borough, in a state, in a country, you see. And this way you got good sense not to go fly. But wait a minute, I went on the website and the website that the government put out said that it's okay. But meanwhile, boots on the ground is like, it's not okay. And you don't want to show up, you see. I told one of my relatives, I said, why don't you research, research these countries before you go booking tickets? Because one particular, uh, one particular um, country he was going to, he had already booked his ticket and everything. And it's just like, wait a minute. But the area that you're going to is the very area that even on the government website, they warned about going to. Even on his channel, I told you all. I want to say back in the summer, maybe late spring, I told you all about Israel. And this was long before all of the stuff that was going on. And I told you, I said that God is not calling us to go to no Israel. You see? And I know for some of you all, that's what you, you know, wanted to do and all this other stuff I was saying back then. You see? So when suddenly a message like this pops up about traveling and uh, travel and mercy and uh, watching and paying attention and all of that. That's because something's about to come that you, you might not be ready for. Okay. Something is about to come that a relative or, or a coworker or somebody is getting ready to go somewhere and do something and you're close to them. And maybe you yourself even have feelings about what they're about to do and they won't listen to you. Then send them this message. Send them this message. The relative who is warning, the friend who's warning, the stranger, the neighbor, you keep seeing the same old signs keep coming up and yet you still press them forward. Even though something is saying, mm, that's not right. God uses people to warn us, to keep us from all harm and danger. But sometimes we call ourselves just doing things because everybody else did it and everybody else, it was okay and it was all right. And I think some people were overreacting and well, it turns out that they got everything under control. Okay, this time, but then what happens next time? You see, some people, they escape situations in the nick of time, but you can't keep, dare we say it, pressing your luck. <laughs> 
oh i don't believe in luck of course you don't it's just a figure of speech <laughs> but no when we're definitely when we're in error or we're in sin you can't keep pressing god and thinking that I'm going to get away with this. I'm going to get away with this. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be all right. At some point, you reap what you sow. It catches up to you. See, if I'm not right with the one true God, that's all the more reason why I shouldn't be playing around out there, messing around, taking chances, doing anything that's unusual, that's not typical, that's unorthodox. Why do you want to take those sorts of chances when you know you're not even right with the Lord? Because mama's prayers only go but so far. Grandmama's prayers only go so far. Lord Jesus. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. The times where my mom and my grandma and other relatives prayed, prayed, prayed. And then sooner or later, something catches up to you. I ended up out there on the freeway back in 93. I was out there on the freeway. Didn't have a seatbelt on. The car ended up having... It's a share of issues out there. First, it was a tow truck driver in front of us who hit a car and then we ran into it. And I felt my body going toward the window shield. And I don't know, it was nothing but the grace of God that caused that boyfriend of mine to extend his arm out. And he put his arm across my chest and held me down. And that's why to this day, my face is not all scratched up. But it was going to be horrific. The whole front part of his Buick Regal was smashed. You see? And it the car had done a spin of some sort. And my um, passenger side door was dented in. So the police officer who showed up on the scene could not get to me on that side. I had to climb out the driver's side, okay? Did I have an odd feeling that morning? I did. I did have an odd feeling that morning about getting out there. But I didn't listen to it. I wasn't even thinking about God back in those days. I was too busy thinking about my flesh, okay? But I know some individuals, you are concerned about these things about what the enemy is up to and that's why you are very careful about where you go who you talk to and you're very observant about what you see especially if it's unusual and it doesn't make sense and you have every right to be you have every right to be I'm confirming some things Yes, we can comfort people. Absolutely. Times where we give people comfort and we say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Nothing's going to happen. You have nothing to worry about. And yes, there are those times where, yes, you don't have anything to be concerned about. But there are times where, unfortunately, the wicked, the wicked does some things. And... We have issue with God because the wicked gets away with some things. But there's always a reason. Sometimes we understand it. Sometimes we don't. I'm going to be in Psalm 37. And then we will close out this message for today. This is a message to encourage you to trust in the Lord. A message for you to wait patiently for him to act. This is a Psalm of David, and we are going to look at the wicked person, that enemy, and we're going to compare that wicked person to the righteous one. The wicked person, deceptive, cunning, planning all sorts of evil, jealous, vengeful. Just mad. And sometimes we go, why is it that they seem to be getting away with all sorts of destruction out here? And the more we warn people and the more we expose and the more we talk to people about, they still figure out ways 
to hurt people. But don't be that one that looks at their riches, looks at their money, looks at their fame and whatever else. Their circle of influence and be jealous. What do I have to do in order to get what they got? You see, do I got to steal? Do I got to go out here and, and take somebody out? I mean, it, this is just crazy because they get everything, don't they? They get all sorts of protections for their evil too. The brotherhood, the sisterhood, the hidden hand, the establishment. They get all sorts of protections too. You don't want that life anyway. You see, you don't want that life. The enemy is at work, saints as well as sinners. And many individuals get tired of seeing celebrity do dirt over in other countries. And then those that know about that dirt say, oh, you thought you could just safely go back to America and not reap any type of consequences? We're coming. We're coming. And then those who we don't even know what went on over in the other country, we weren't there. But somehow there's a war or rumor of war that shows up on our land because of what some celebrity or his croonies or people who they're not celebrities but they're very powerful something that they did that set somebody off over in that country and they thought that uh it wasn't going to catch up and sometimes we look around and we go this war right here this has nothing to do with us absolutely it doesn't but it has something to do with what happened back in the day or what happened two days ago or two weeks ago or whoever it was that went somewhere and insulted somebody and they thought that it was going to be okay and all right. And people didn't forget. Can I tell you the old countries? They don't forget. They don't forget. You going on about your business. Right? Handling your day to day. And there's some group saying. You know what so and so did. Hmm. <laughs> you see. Lord Jesus. So. When you follow God, you are to live your life differently from the wicked. You understand? So that you can be able to get those treasures in heaven. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, let me stop right there. We have individuals that the whole reason why they decide to travel and go somewhere. Not so much about, oh, I just want to go somewhere. No, they want to go because they're covetous. They want to go because they're jealous. And the time at which they decide that they want to go somewhere is the time at which it is not safe. It is not a good idea. There's enemies in the camp. People look at other people's social media far too long and they gaze and gaze and gaze. And they formulate all sorts of things in their head. And they want to feel important. And they want to want people to pay attention to them. And they want to feel like there's something special. And so they set off going somewhere and even though everybody else the trip was smooth and they've got the lovely pictures and whatever else and then this individual who calls themselves trying to be like everybody else goes out there and they end up having all sorts of problems they were sick they lost their phone so they couldn't take any pictures i mean a whole lot of mess goes on now why is that because sometimes people are doing things not only because they think it's a good idea, but they're doing some things from a place that is prideful, that is arrogant, that's self-absorbed, that's narcissistic. They want what others have. But the believer is not supposed to behave that way. But we got some lukewarm believers we got some backsliders we got some folks who just straight up i don't know what they believe in but it's just messy with them 
But if you do call yourself a believer, you call yourself a child of God, some people like throwing that around, then you know you're supposed to be trusting in the Lord and doing good. And it's not doing good if I'm just making myself do something just because. And it's not for the righteous reasons at all. No wonder some individuals never make their destinations. No wonder some individuals end up prematurely leaving us because they were bad examples from the start. God says, I'm separating the wheat from the tares. Uh -uh. I'm not going to keep allowing the patriarch, the matriarch who's prideful, putting things out here, creating all sorts of competitions between sons and daughters, doing all sorts of evil to remain on the face of this earth. Some folks crying and they don't even realize how deep, how deep the situation or situations have been for so long with that one who they're grieving over and all the dramas and traumas they left behind. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If you're not going to be good for somebody or for a group, then I don't want you sticking around causing all sorts of problems either. You see, that's just how I look at things. Some folks say, I'm glad she ain't God. I know that's right. I'm glad you're not God either because we'd be at war, huh? <laughs> Over the littlest of things. You see, God says we're to commit our way to him. We're supposed to trust in him. Psalm 37, 5 says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause, like the noonday sun. Hallelujah. David, he was the type of individual that he was taking delight in the Lord. You know, putting aside all the other stuff that he did, because the folks love to throw up David's stuff, just like they like to throw up your stuff, don't they? But he still was one who was after God's own heart. When we're talking about delighting, right? Delight yourself in the Lord. What exactly do we mean by that? It means, according to my study Bible, it means to experience great pleasure and joy in his or her presence. If someone is not delighting in the Lord, don't expect them to delight in you, saints. Don't expect them to appreciate the warnings that you give them. The exposing of what the rich is up to that's leading us into war, rumors of war. Don't expect them to. You did your part, right? You warned, you cautioned, you exposed, you did all you possibly could. You told them that they shouldn't be covetous. They shouldn't be jealous. They shouldn't be going places just because uh, and not allowing the Lord to lead them. You did all of that. So what do we do? We, we delight in the Lord. We want the desires of our heart to be met. But in due time, in due season. We're entrusting God with everything. You hear me? Everything, our families, our jobs, our possessions, all of it. Because when we know we got these enemies and haters and whatever else out here, that's all the more reason why I'm putting everybody in God's hands. Hallelujah. Even my enemies, I'm putting them in God's hands. Because I know that God knows things about my enemies that I could never know. And I like how God deals with my enemies. Hallelujah. Praise be to the one true God. You see? We are to be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. So in my quiet, in my peace, in my stillness, whether I'm in nature or whether I'm at home, the point is, is that I'm being still before the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalm 37, 7, that we are not to fret when men succeed in their ways. So he successfully ended up destroying that country and she successfully ended up breaking down that business. And the hackers ended up successfully messing up systems. And, and so we can't get certain things done. Okay, fine. Cause that recently happened at a major company and they lost, they lost some business. And they're so, they, they got their people so attached to what the, what the technology said 
that good old fashioned common sense isn't kicking in. I'm like, this is where you have to recognize that technology messed up big time. You even said it yourself. You could save some customers and you choose not to. How dumb is dumb is dumb. You see, (laughs) some of you all know because you've looked, you've looked at various things in your life where things went wrong or you work for companies and you're like, this is a hacker's job. It's obvious that the hacker did it, but you're, you're allowing the customers to suffer. You're not hooking them up. You're not helping them out. You're not trying to fix things. They're clearly telling you that these things happen and you're not acknowledging that. Instead, you're just saying, oh, well, you, you need to do this and you need to do that. Why are you putting that back on the customer's hands? You see, see, sometimes the enemy is working through systems. Stay with me. He's working through applications or she or it. But it took a human, though, to create that cyber war, that cyber attack. It took a human to do some things to cause all sorts of issue or issues. And you think that God doesn't work in situations like that? I looked at it this way. I said, well, I'm not going to sit up here and keep talking about the same old thing when it's obvious that we know what's going on i'm just going to take my business elsewhere so yeah your hacker won if he was trying to steal your customers he won because your people are ill-equipped to try to uh your your people are not trained they're ill-equipped to handle when technology doesn't work (laughs) and you don't know how to get your customers back (laughs) lord jesus You see, and so that is something that's been going on. I worked for quite a few companies, so I know about it. That's why I bring it up as an example. And this sort of stuff was going on behind the scenes. And basically the way it was explained to us was, of course, you don't say that that is what happened, but I didn't like the explanations that we were told to give which sounded more like the customer's at fault when the customer had nothing to do with it, you see. But you see the shady things that go on? A cyber war behind the scenes. Lord Jesus. And so now the the prayer is, you already prayed about family. Now the prayer is protect your assets. Protect the various insurances that you have. The companies that you have various tools applications they're making it harder for you to um cancel applications especially when they're um those trial ones where i'm just going to try this out real quick and so when you get enough of those then what happens now your money is being taken for something that all I did was just try it. I didn't intend on paying full price. And so then you're punished because you didn't cancel in time. You see. Ooh, Lord Jesus. So you pray, you pray about your, you pray that the Lord's hand be upon your money. That you pray that in Jesus name, that, um, you um, are guided when it comes to your finances to cancel subscriptions you don't need, cancel trials you don't need, right? Shop for cheaper insurance plans, um, purchase insurance, you know, whatever you got to do. But ask the Lord to be with you every step of the way. Because, see, if the enemy can't get you one way, he's going to try to get you in two, three, four other different ways, you see. But we be st- when we're being still, the Lord shows us areas where we need to fortify those walls, you see. Sometimes you got to talk to your own family members and say, listen, we got to stand down. We got to be quiet right now. 
We got to unplug because we got family members that are going through a lot and we don't want to have any type of war between family members. So this is just a good time for all of us to just distance ourselves and be quiet. Okay. And if they ask, why are we quiet or, oh, I haven't heard from you in a while or whatever else, you just let them know you're busy. You see, especially during a time of grief when there's a loss of a loved one. But once again, if I'm being still, this is where these thoughts come into mind. They come into my spirit. Uh, God gives me the guidance in terms of what I'm supposed to do next. It's never a rush. It's slowly going into something, right? We're waiting patiently for him. I noticed that. It's not, it's me rushing me, yes, but God, no, uh uh. He's very patient with us and he expects us to be patient with him. Once again, we do not fret when men succeed in their ways. That hacker was successful at attacking that system, you see, or those family members are having their share of difficulties because of that one family member. She got just what she wanted. You see, but we're not going to fret because they were successful in their ways. Oh, the, the government knew all along that that country was going to suffer like they are. They knew it. They knew it. You see, but we're not going to fret about it. Because Bible says, do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Psalm 37, 8. Do not fret. It leads only to evil for evil men will be cut off. Stand on that. Praise be to the one true God. If you're dealing with some silent verbal wars. Praise be to the one true God. If you've noticed something internationally that's really rubbed you the wrong way. Evil men will be cut off. Money's being cut off. Opportunities being cut off. You see, businesses being cut off, land ownership, investors and so forth being cut off. There's a way to cut evil men off. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. You see, that's why the enemies end up showing up and taking over. Because if that if we say that that's an enemy, that might be an enemy to us, but that might be God's soldiers coming. Hmm. You see, oh, oh, wait a minute. Now we got a different turn of events. See, sometimes we could be calling somebody an enemy when in fact, no, that's God's soldiers. That's the favor that's upon them and not on us any longer because we weren't acting right, doing what was right, didn't bow down to an almighty God. And so now somebody got favor, Lord Jesus. See, when you're on the wrong side of God, somebody else gets the favor and you don't. And as a nation, you know that there's been way too much. We're a God fearing nation over the years. And then it became, oh, no, we're we're not. Uh huh. OK. And you swept God out of the schools and out of communities and you swept God out of systems and process and applications and you swept the people of God out of all of these opportunities and things and you formulated judgments okay and how's things go in these days that's why it feels heavy that's why it feels like it is ooh, the last days yeah a lot of interesting things are taking place right now because they don't want spirit truth they don't want it they want what they want when they want it the flesh overrides the spirit i had to tell one relative look you got to use your critical thinking skills when it comes to matters dealing with family members right well you got to use your critical thinking skills when it comes to things nationally internationally and spiritually why is it that the hand of god his favor is not upon that land why is it that there's still poverty? Why is it that there's still sickness and disease with no cure? Oh, but there is a cure, but it's not getting to you, though. 
you see there's so many blocks there because a nation does not want to bow down humbly before an almighty god they do not want to acknowledge something that they can't taste feel see smell whatever they just don't but those of us who know better we know what it takes we know what it takes and that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper hallelujah <laughs> while everybody else is talking about i don't understand and then meanwhile you're getting blessed on the back end come on now a little while and the wicked will be no more though you look for them they will not be found but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace it's coming it's coming, it's coming. Great peace, great peace, great peace. Woo, Lord Jesus. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked for he knows their day is coming. Some of you all, you even said this about some of the wicked people in your family. You said, mm -hmm, their day is coming and didn't it show up? I know I could put my hand up. Didn't it show up? We tried to play fairly. We tried to play nicely and then God said, move out the way. I got this hallelujah the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy but you won't be poor and needy for always the one who recently lost out on much you won't be poor and needy for always Woo, lord jesus the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy to slay those whose ways are upright but their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken better the little that the righteous have i remember my grandmother said something like this it was worded a little differently but it meant the same thing better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked for the power of the wicked will be broken but the lord upholds the righteous hallelujah the days of the blameless are known to the lord and their inheritance will endure forever in times of disaster they will not wither in days of famine they will enjoy plenty but the wicked will perish the lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields can i say that your enemies your enemies will be like the beauty of the fields they will vanish vanish like smoke stand on that somebody write that down somebody put it right there on the mirror that you look at because you worry too much god says i got this you already put them in my hands i got this the wicked borrow and do not repay but the righteous give generously those the lord blesses will inherit the land but those he curses will be cut off okay some of us we asked the lord we said lord Please bless us with the monies so that we can be able to pay back what we borrowed. We trust in you. We believe in you. We know that you want what's right. What you know, we know that you want us to do what is right. Hallelujah. But those that are wicked, mm -mm. You, you see what scripture says. But those he curses will be cut off. So when they say things like this is a curse, I don't understand. I'm under a curse. I feel like this is a, when they say that sort of thing, they are, they are. And then they want the favor of the righteous man or the righteous woman to fall upon them. But God has a way of blocking that and the righteous, their prayers aren't heard. And when they're not heard, it's safe to say that we stop praying for that person and move on. They're under a curse. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I am old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend friend freely. Their children will be blessed. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Notice that the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. So you have to stay faithful with the one true God. They will be protected forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. So when you when you see, oh, my goodness, all this bad stuff is happening to this family or, you know, the family's family and all this, that's a generational thing. You see. So then they have offspring. Oh, my offspring's going to be so blessed and they're going to be this and that. And you see all the wickedness that the mother did. And now you see the daughter. She's wicked too. 
be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The daughter or the son or both, they don't make the kind of monies in the future that the mother makes. They don't get the type of opportunities like the mother. They don't get a lot of things. They will never have the type of talents that their father had. See, the person's wicked, their offspring cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. We see this with celebrities. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom and his tongue speaks what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous seeking their very lives, but the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. That's right. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. Once again, what are we doing? We're waiting for the Lord. What's he going to do? He's going to exalt you to inherit the land. Somebody literally, this is for you because you are waiting to inherit the land, the property, the home, <laughs> the cars, everything. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. Sometimes the wicked is cut off in various ways, cut off through uh, going to jail, cut off through death, cut off through people no longer speaking to one another. The wicked are cut off financially, the favors cut off, the circle of influence cut off. So there's so many different ways. So please, please, please don't let your mind only see just one way because God, he comes in many ways when he, uh, uh, when he distributes his, uh, justice. Okay. Okay. So please, please don't do that. Don't put God in a little box and say, Oh, he only works this way or that way because he doesn't, he works in many ways. I've been on this planet for almost 50 years. He works in many different ways. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I've seen a wicked and ruthless man. Oh, come on now. Haven't we seen this in the media time and time again? I've seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil. Hmm. But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. We're going to see that too. Some of these major, once again, using an example of celebrities. I really don't have a passion for celebrities right now because there's so much wickedness in the camp. And the Lord has been saying time and time again, he's going to make examples of these people. So um, I don't have any type of emotion for them. I am just giving examples. But there are so many wicked ones in the camp. And what's going to happen is that some of them, the suffering that they experience, you'll be looking for them, but you won't be able to find what exactly is going on with them. Okay. Until much later, until much later, but there will be a suffering. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. Okay. There is a future for the man of peace. But all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. So in order for this peace to show up and there will be a peace. I know we talk a lot about the last days and about the negativity and about the punishments and about the judgment and about seeing, you know, various things with our economy and the way money is changing and being exchanged and all of these updates and upgrades and tech and all of that. We see all of these different things going on, but there is going to be this peace that is going to show up and those of you all who are aware of the peace, you know, it comes before everything else, which is going to be even worse than what we've ever seen experienced. Okay. But there is going to be peace. There will be sinners that will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. So all these people who we see who are just demonstrating wick wickedness, they're celebrating wickedness, they're encouraging wickedness, they're being cut off. Okay. It didn't work. It didn't work. They thought that by adding all sorts of um, just things that totally went against scripture, totally went against our creator. They thought that if they put that out there front and center, that it was going to actually make things better. But it's actually causing more division, more issues and uh, more loneliness for a lot of people, too, because see, <laughs> 
the the pride everybody got pride right the women got pride you know um the the various people who celebrate all things related to their identity they have their share of pride um you know the black pride back in the day right white pride all of this pride all this stuff that we saw over the years and then eventually what it does it do it creates division and so then you have people who don't really want to sit down with people and people who really don't want to break bread and talk and and just act peaceably and instead they want to parade their wickedness okay okay so when you do that sort of thing then there's this cutting away and cutting off so you don't get to work here and you don't get the type of favor that you want and you don't get to live in a community at peace and you're just walking around and you're always troubled you see we've got to humble ourselves before our creator and stop with all this prideful talk and prideful this and prideful that the salvation of the righteous comes from the lord you see, he is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. So when you're trying to understand why that righteous grandmother, that righteous mother, that righteous dad, grandfather, what have you, they seem to be so, so at peace, right? Don't disrupt their peace. Don't disrupt their peace with all of your wickedness and your pride and all of what you don't like about the way they are and whatever else you see. They're walking with the Lord. They took God seriously. They took him at his word. They got saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled, you see, and the Lord helps them and delivers them while somebody's talking about how depressed they are and how they can't seem to get a break and how they can't get favor. But yet God continues to be with certain people. And I remember being out in the world. I saw this sort of thing when it came down to believers and I was like, wow, I said, there's something special about them. It seems like they always get the upper hand. They always win, you know, and we can't seem to get a break. Hmm. You see the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because why they take refuge in him. If somebody could catch this word, they would be so much better in mind, body and spirit. I know it's, I know it's difficult to wait on God. I know it is. But if you wait on God, you know, God promises that if we submit to his timing, he will honor us. See, you won't be the one that's always missing out. And I can't seem to be a, that one that's out there getting all of these cool things and going places and doing all that. Mm -hmm. God promises once again, that if we submit to his timing, he will honor us. Peter said, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Somebody, you're humbling yourself right now at the workplace. You're humbling yourself around your family members and friends. But then God in time is going to lift you up. And that's in first Peter five, six. So we are to be patient. We're going to continue to do the work of God. We're going to allow God to choose the best time to change our circumstances. We're not going to worry about our enemies. We're not going to be concerned about the threats that fall upon us, but we are going to be observant. We are going to pay close attention. We are going to be mindful of some things, but we're going to trust in God every step of the way. I thank you for listening to this entire message. May you be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, and we do welcome giving on this channel. Thanks in advance.